Hallelujah. How's everybody? Amen. That blessed and highly flavored. Some people uh, run the 5K on Sunday. We dance it. <laughs> Praise God. You love Jesus, you dance. <laughs> There's some information about voting. I don't know where it is. Where is it? It's where? Okay, well, we need to bring them in here so people can grab them. Oh, they're over here. Gives you the... Anyways, we vote for the best of evil. <laughs> Anyways, hallelujah. Two liars and one thief. What do you want, you know? <laughs> Praise God. Your choice. Just make sure it's... We're from the right. Hello? Remember, the left are goats, the right's our sheep. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Glory. Thank God God's got it in control. But, you know, he did give it to us. He gave us the world. He said, here's the earth, take care of it. Do something with it. Live the life I've given you. And use what I've given you. And don't ask for any more to use what I've given you. <laughs> People are always asking, oh, when they haven't used what God's given them. In other words, use the first counsel you got. Don't ask for a second one. <laughs> and everything else, praise God. You know, we have talked about seeing it through and hearing it through. And <laughs> the Holy Spirit said that those were two attributes to the area of thinking it through. <clears throat> and so he brought me into a place this morning, and I began to realize so many other things that we don't realize, and a lack of understanding in these areas. And one of the things that we must first have is a willing heart to understand. If you think you made it, you've fallen already. If you think you know it, you have fallen already. Amen? You've already fallen. Because you'll make choices on what you think, and if you're prideful, it's a flawed belief system and that produces flawed perception every time in second Tim timothy chapter 2 anybody ever been there <laughs> i can't believe i did that <laughs> you know gosh why didn't i think that through Why didn't, I, why didn't I really see that? Why didn't, why didn't I just think it through? You know, when we were in a world, we had common sense. That was good and evil. But now we're not of the world. We're of the kingdom. Now we have spiritual senses, which is righteousness it's different so there isn't a common sense of good and evil now there is a sense of what is righteous because that is what pleases god amen in second timothy chapter 2 in verse 1 let's read the first 13 chapters of 13 verses together would you read it you therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in christ jesus and the things that you have heard. Now, wait a minute. Be strong in the grace. What's the word grace mean? God's plan. Be strong in his plan. Has everybody got it? Remember, grace is not mystical. You know, people call it unmerited favor. Well, let me tell you what unmerited favor means. 
It means that you've done something to earn unmerited favor in the area that you haven't done it. You haven't earned it. But because of this, now I'm going to bring this back a little bit. God came into the world because he loved us. Amen? We didn't earn salvation, did we? But we have to cooperate with his plan to what? Maintain it. But keep, people call grace unmerited favor. Well, yeah, I don't look at it as unmerited favor. I look at it as a plan of escape. He granted us a way. Amen? Here's the way. That's why he's known as the way, the truth, and the life. I, I don't look at it as favor. Does everybody understand that? I look at it as love. There's a difference between favor and love. I'd say it's unmerited love, not unmerited favor. Does everybody understand that? that I, and if we begin to look at that arena, that it's because he first loved us, we love him. He came and died for me and you, not to grant us favor. <laughs> Does everybody get it? He came because... He wanted to know how much he loves us. He wants me and you to know. That's the purpose. It isn't unmerited favor. It's unmerited love. So we got to stop this foolishness of what the world constantly interprets my father's word. I get frustrated when I hear goofiness and foolishness. Twist and turn the word of God. Not, you know why they do that? Because they don't know him as a person. They only know him as a letter. And when you know him as a person, you know his character. You know what he's trying to express to you. You know what he's trying to bring you. He, you know him as a person, not just as a word. So when, the word, when I see the word grace, I don't look at unmerited favor, unmerited love. Amen? Amen? Now, as we begin to cooperate with grace, we get favor. Does everybody get that? Amen. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Let's go. Verse 1. You, therefore, uh, therefore, my son and daughters, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men. How, you know someone that's faithful? Consistent. Amen? Submissive. See, you can be consistent and not submissive. Amen? That's faithful. Who will be able to teach others also. In other words, they're like-minded. You, therefore, must what? Endure hardship as a what? A good soldier of Jesus Christ. Let me share something. Please understand this. We've got to begin to Look at things in the area that this is a military operation. And there's protocol. There's divine order. There's offices. When you begin to acknowledge that the kingdom here on earth is a military operation, your life will change. If you look at yourself as an independent, then you're not in a military uh, attire then you're an independent. Does everybody get it? You're either in the military or you're not. There are special task forces in the military. Amen? There are certain things that God requires for each part of the military, but it's still a military operation. That's why he calls us soldiers. That's why Jesus is the commander-in-chief of what? God's army. Does everybody get this? See, so many times people fall away into the area of religion. And this is not a religious operation. This is a rescue operation that you've been called into to fulfill. And if you're not willing to fulfill the mission that God has placed in your life, and some of us still don't know what the mission is, but it will come as you're faithful and consistent. Does everybody get it? We must be willing to fulfill the mission that God has given us. Listen, I didn't know I was going to be a pastor. 
I still don't look at myself as a pastor. I look at myself as a captain of a ship. The Lord's ordained me to be a captain of a ship and to keep the ship on course, may oversee all operations and everything that goes on to make sure everything is in divine order and report to him on a daily basis and give accountability to everything that goes on in this house because I'm responsible and I'm accountable. Now, I can't do that on my own. Only he can give it. Only he can make me live in the same block for 30 years. <laughs> I don't think anybody, has anybody lived on the same block for 30 years? That you have to be ordained by God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyways, and, and, and then watch people's lives change in the back room of a house. You know? <laughs> Come on. It has to be God. But only God can do that. Amen. Now, again, I had no idea that this was what was supposed to happen. But I was willing to do whatever it took. And when he would ask me something, I'll do it. You know, one of the things that I was always would be one of the first to volunteer. I'll do it. I'll do it. I got plugged into a fellowship, and I was willing to do whatever it took. I didn't care for clean bathrooms. I didn't care. And let me tell you, even after 15 years and 20 years and whatever, there were still times when God would send me to a place where I went out to go get coffee for people or whatever. See, it doesn't matter. I, I don't look at the area of office. I don't look at the area of anything. I look at that area that we are one in the spirit. And if we maintain one in the spirit, but then in the military operation, I look at myself as a captain, as an overseer. The Bible calls that a bishop, but I'm not in a bishopish. We got enough bishops around it. Anyways, hallelujah, let's go on. So we got to begin to look at this as a military operation, amen, with protocol, with divine order. It says, verse 4, look at this. No one engaged in warfare can entangle himself with the what? The affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. In other words, as a soldier, the entanglements and affairs of this life is this world. You know, there's all kinds of distractions. Amen. Um, you got the internet. You got music. You got all kinds of things. A Facebook. Facebook, ay, ay, ay. look at Facebook, it, listen, let me just share this, live your life, don't exploit it, amen, don't exploit your life on Facebook, keep it private, you know why, because what you exploit today can harm you tomorrow, amen. be a good soldier, you know what being a good soldier is, thinking it through, thinking it through, now, we, we've got to examine ourselves, don't we? Are you a good soldier? Are you a good soldier to the office and ministry that God has given you? Are you a good soldier? It says in verse 5, And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he, cannot, he is not crowned unless he what? Competes what? According to the rules. Hello. According to the what? to the rules. Those are the guidelines. Amen? Those are the guidelines. And this, that's the operation, purpose, and course that a fellowship or ministry has. Entanglements and affairs of this world. There are things of influence. We must begin to think things through. All the way through. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8.
You know, the Bible tells us that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen? Well, let me tell you, knowledge can also be a stumbling block. Because you can rely on knowledge so much that you reject and grieve the Holy Spirit. You become religious and stiff-necked. You become bound by the letter instead of by the spirit of leading. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 1, it says, Now concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge, right? Knowledge does what? Puffs up, but love what? Edifies. And if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by God. Therefore, concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is no other God but one. In other words, knowledge can puff you up and cause you to make harsh decisions, not thinking things through. In Galatians 6, Galatians chapter 6, and verse 1. Would you read it with me? Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. But if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work or his what? Own thoughts. Does everybody get it? Examine your own thoughts. And then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in an other. Does everybody see this? Examine those thoughts, we've talked about hearing it through, seeing it through, but we got to begin. Those are two attributes of thinking it through. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10. In verse 11. 1 Corinthians 10, 11. It says, now all these things happen to them as examples. Actually, I want to go back a little bit. Verse 6. But now these things became our example to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality, as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempt, are tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain, as some of them also complain and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now, all these things happen to them as examples. Examples for who? Me and you. And they were written for our admiration. 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 Whatever it is. Upon whom the ends of the ages has come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he what? Falls. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God's faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. And when you are tempted beyond what you are able, it's because you are out of order. Amen? You're out of order. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. 
Therefore, my beloved, flee from what? Idolatry. Idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge for yourselves what I say. In other words, if we'll think things through. Think it through. Go to James chapter 1. Thinking has to do with thoughts, and that means with thinking, we must have understanding. We may see it through, hear it through, and not understand. So when we don't think it through with understanding, does everybody get it? We make wrong choices. Thinking it through. In James chapter 1 and verse 21, let's speak it together. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately what? Forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, that's in the spirit, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Wow. Now, that means to maintain a soldier status for the kingdom, we must have a desire and fulfillment for fulfilling the mission of the calling that God has given us. Amen? And the only way that that can be done is that if we think things through. There's going to be an area where we're going to need to uh, bear all things, isn't there? Listen, the distractions of the world and the temptations and everything else are on every side. We're hard-pressed. God knows. But he always makes a way of escape. But if you're not seeing or hearing or thinking things through, you won't grab the way of escape, and you'll fall right back into the pit. See, in this area, when we begin to fall out of that arena of, or not thinking things through, there's evidence. It's called our will and not God's will. That's when the evidence is, isn't it? Our desires, not God's desires. What we do then is, Self is put first, physically, emotionally, and financially. Self is put first, physically, emotionally, and financially. Self is always first. What happens here is thinking is associated with the mind. We have the carnal mind, which is known as the mind of the flesh. We have the mind of the spirit. And we have the soulish mind. Go to Romans 8. We must begin to recognize that there are these three minds have a desire and are always coming and trying to take dominion. They're trying to rule. They're always battling for rule. Romans chapter 8. In verse 5. And we've heard this before. It says what? For those who live according to the flesh set their what? Minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the what? Things of the Spirit. So you're either setting your mind on yourself or kingdom. 
For to be carnally minded, which is the mind of the flesh, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It will always promote rebellion. The carnal mind, the flesh mind, will always promote rebellion. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Your original mind that you were born with hates God. Does everybody got it? It is not subject to the ways of God. It loves self. So if it loves self, it hates God. Now you may think, well, my mind never hated God. No. You loved yourself before God, so you hated God. So then those who are in the flesh cannot what? Please God. Does everybody understand this? Now listen. The carnal mind or the mind of the flesh can't change. It must be exchanged. So if it can't change, we got to exchange it with another mind. Does everybody get this? All right. The, what we want to do is have the mind of the spirit rule all things. So the soulish mind must be renewed by exchange. Amen. The carnal mind can't be renewed. It must be exchanged. What, does everybody get this? I'm going to say this again. The carnal mind cannot change. It must be exchanged by the mind of the spirit. The soulish mind must exchange. It only can change by exchange. And that's through the word of God. So that the mind of the spirit has dominion. Is everybody okay? Now you have the choice of which one you will follow. You'll either follow the mind of the flesh. Amen. Amen. The mind of the soul or the mind of the spirit, one or the other. The mind of the flesh cannot be renewed. It must be exchanged. The mind of the soul is changed with exchange. And the mind of the spirit stands strong. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Has so everybody got that? Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us. He's going to expose the soulish mind here. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own what? Affections. That's the soulish mind. In other words, affections means emotion. Emotion. Now, in return for the same, I speak to you as what? Children. You also be open. Don't be unevenly yoked. Together with unbelievers. Why well, he knows it's going to be influencing your soulish mind. He's not talking about the mind of the spirit. The mind of the spirit stands fast and strong. It's the other minds that we've got to begin to acknowledge so that they are submissive under the mind of the spirit in all things. And he's speaking here now about the soulish Mind, the one that must change by exchange. Is everybody with me? This is the one that is renewed. Don't be unevenly yoked with unbelievers, for what lawlessness have righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion is light with darkness, and what accord is Christ with Belial, or what part is a believer with an unbeliever? Why? All of these things are affecting the 
soulish mind. Amen? It's preventing it from renewing. Does everybody get this? And one agreement is the temple of God. What oils for you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I'll dwell in them. I'll walk among them. I'll be their God. Those should be my people. If you'll just do this, if you'll come out from among the soulish realm, come out from among them, and don't touch what's unclean that's going to contaminate you and take from you. And I'll be a father to you, and you'll be my sons and daughters says the Lord. Why? Because can the Lord trust someone that lives by emotion? No. Can he trust someone that lives carnally? No. Affections is associated with emotions. It is the soulish mind. To think it through is to monitor the thoughts of which mind is taking dominion. Evidence. There is evidence. In other words... Evidence of rejecting the mind of the spirit. One of the evidence is selfish ambitions. Rebellion. Criticism. Criticism. People are first to criticize and last to volunteer. You can tell that that is the soulish arena. That's the soulish arena. Man, they're first to criticize and they're last to volunteer. That's the wrong mind. Rebellion. Um, I want to call it hypocritical love. They love you one day and hate you the next. You, people use that word love totally outrageously. Oh, I love you. When they really don't. Why? Love suffers. People look up what love is, and they tell people they love. Are you willing to do that for another person? What happens in this arena, in the soulish, with the rejection, the rejecting the mind of, the, of Christ, the evidence is also becoming religious and stiff-necked, unsubmissive, except for personal cause. Again, the self arena is first. Always first. In the kingdom, you're last. We're last. Does everybody got it? We're last. In the world, we're first. It's amazing how many soulish Christians there are on Facebook. Look at me. I don't want to look at you. I want to know your fruits, not your face. Proverbs 21. Has so everybody got it? The carnal man, carnal mind, flesh mind cannot change. It must be exchanged. The soulish mind must be renewed with exchange. And if it's not renewed, it will always be battled. Now, let me tell you, the enemy wants to promote and influence the soulish arena. The flesh arena. So why? So we reject the mind of the spirit. Proverbs 21, is everybody there? In verse uh, 15. Let's read it together. 2115. It is a joy for the just to do justice, but destruction will come to the workers of iniquity. A man who wanders from the way of what? Understanding will what? We'll rest in the assembly of the dead. Hello. So is understanding needed. Amen. He who loves pleasure will be a poor man, and he who loves wine and oil will not be rich. 
The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the unfaithful for the upright. Better to dwell in the wilderness than when a contentious, angry woman. There is a... <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, this is getting good. <laughs> There is a desire, there is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. He who follows righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and what? Honor. Honor. A wise man scales the city of the, of might, of the mighty and brings down the what? Trusted stronghold. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from Hello, yes. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, a proud and haughty man, scoffer is his name. He acts with the arrogant pride. Oh, hallelujah. Listen. Allowing thoughts to dictate decisions instead of thinking it through. We will need understanding. We must maintain understanding. First of all, we got to get understanding to discern what mind is there. How many times have we made decisions that we regretted? How many times have we made decisions that we didn't even know about the ripple effect to it? Amen? Man, I didn't know that was going to happen. I didn't know that. I didn't know I was doing that. I didn't know I was not submissive. I didn't know, well, because you didn't think it through. You just move by what you felt, what you believed. Amen? Listen, we are in critical times. I can't emphasize this enough. Go to Romans 12. Doesn't the Bible say, as a man thinks, he what? He is. Thinking it through. Now, again, we've got to realize that we're gaining trust of God. That's our desire, right? We want to trust him. You know, in this arena, think about vows. And I, and I always like to use vows. How many times have you compromised a vow? Amen? Did you realize, think about when you first got saved. Yes, I'm willing to do whatever. Man, I'll do whatever. Then all of a sudden, eh. Especially in a project or an assignment. You've been given an assignment. Yes, I'm there for you. Yeah, sure you are. Drift away. Why? Not thinking it through. Allowing the dictates of the two minds to rule instead of the mind of the spirit. Putting what? Who first? When you're first and not last, you know you're out of divine order. Hallelujah. Whoa. Verse, uh, Romans 12. Did I say Romans 12? I'm glad I said Romans 12. Starting at verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility. Amen? It is whose responsibility? Ours every day. Lord, I commit to you my spirit, soul, and body. There are, let me, you know, I don't want to go into this arena, but let me, it's so vitally important to utilize the gifts of the spirit. It's so important. The Holy Spirit is so cool, so awesome. He so wants us to utilize these things. Why? To stir us up. You know, he shows us things. He shows us things that are so prevalent to our life every single day. Every day. That's why relationship with him is so important. 
He's a holder of the gifts. He just lets us use them. Those are tools. He'll say, use this one. Amen? Use that one. Not goofiness, not granola, but straightforward and pure. You know, there are things that he allows us to see, but even though we see things, it doesn't mean we expose them. There are things he shows me about individuals. I don't expose it. In fact, most of the time, I, I don't even go there. I just say, what do you want me to do? And he says, pray. So many times people are willing to expose stuff instead of letting God handle it. Amen? Don't get critical. Put a guard over your tongue. When you speak to someone, you're speaking to a child of the Most High God. Amen? Respect one another and honor one another. And you'll get respect and honor from Him in everything that we do. Fulfill your mission. Fulfill what God has given you. Even the little things. What does He ask you to do? And what does he ask you to get rid of? What does he ask you to let go of? Give me your spirit, soul, and body as a living sacrifice is what he says. Give it to me. Surrender it to me. If you're not willing to do that, then you're not about kingdom business. Why? Because the mind and the spirit will always bring that. The mind and the spirit will always bring commitments before us. The mind and the spirit will always bring kingdom business first. The mind and the spirit will always be about Christ first. He will always protect you. He will always guide you. And he will guide you to all truth. But if you can't discern with understanding, which discernment is understanding... What mind is leading you, then you won't make correct decisions. The Holy Spirit, once rejected, will not implement himself. He'll wait. And he won't reestablish himself with you until you repent. And if you don't know you've made that mistake, he's away from you. And then you got to come to a service or something to find out that you blew it. And then you repent, and he's willing to take over. And what he says, he says, will you let me rule your life again? Will you let me rule your... How can he rule your life without having to rule your thoughts? It doesn't work. Amen? And verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. What mind is this? Which one can be renewed? The soulish mind. Does everybody got it? The carnal mind can't. The soulish mind can. Why? Because the soulish mind wants to interpret what the mind of the spirit is saying. That you may prove what is that what? Good acceptable and perfect will of God. 2 Corinthians 11. Is everybody okay? Are you getting something? Remember, we're here for training, aren't we? In verse 1, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 1. All that you would bear with me in a little folly, and indeed you do bear with me, for I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your what? 
minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is what? In Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. In other words, you must think it through with understanding and discernment. Amen? By uh, thinking it through, what? By seeing and hearing, comparing, discernment and understanding. Second Peter chapter 3. You know, one of the things that Jesus did in the book of Revelation, he rebuked those who thought they were good. He rebuked those who were lukewarm, and they thought they were hot. He rebuked them and said, man, you know what? Get back to your first love and your first works. Your first works are associated with the first desires that you had, the zealousness that you had for the house of God, the zealousness that you had for the fellowship, for the brethren, for everyone else and everything and promoting things. Get back to your first love is what he was saying. Get back. And again, some of us have never had a first love. Well, today you can start. Second Pete chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's read it together. Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your what? Pure minds by way of reminder. That, well, by way of what? Reminder. So we need to be reminded, don't we? We need to be stirred up. Listen, you have a choice, too. God will never interfere with your will. Never. Well, if God's really there, have him make me do it. So a car runs you over, you know. <laughs> it wasn't God. You opened the door to the devil. Because you just tempted God, didn't you? People are so goofy sometimes. Goofy. God is real. He's a loving dad. He desires respect and honor, just like a father desires respect and honor. He's not withholding anything from us. He wants to give us everything. But he knows that he's going to bring us through a training to give us something and bless us with something so it's going to promote they're not going to cause people to stumble listen God will never give you anything to stumble you in that arena does everybody understand he just watches us fall into the stumble and then he rescues us amen I mean I'm saying that sometimes he sticks out his foot and you trip or something you know so he says hey wake up why because there's a cliff over there hallelujah <laughs> verse 2 that you may be what mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior knowing this that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Well, I want you to know something. Things are not continuing the way they were. He's coming. Whether you like it or not. And whether you believe it or not is not going to change God's plan. For this is they willfully forget, they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for what? Fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and one 
thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that should all come to what? Repentance. Listen, when you begin to, when you are thinking things through, and you're, I don't want to say analyzing, but you're monitoring, and you're finding out that you're compromising your commitments, you're compromising your vows, you're compromising your, anything, anything area of compromise, you know that you're allowing another mind to take over or lead. And if you don't recognize that, you, what happens is God begins to mistrust you. I can't trust someone in that arena. When I see them begin to drift off in that area, I can't trust them. Why? Because it's just a matter of time to where they, be, they will betray. They will betray. And they may not want to, but they will. Because they're not allowing the mind of the Spirit to rule. Only the mind of the Spirit will keep unity and submission. Any other mind will bring division and selfish ambitions. Is everybody okay? 2 Corinthians 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 8, 8. I speak not by commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for as your sakes he became poor. That you through his poverty might become what? Rich. And in this I give advice. Are you ready for the advice? It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete the doing of it. That as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also must be a completion out of what you have. For if there is first a what? Willing mind. That willing mind is known as the mind of the Spirit. You are allowing the mind of the Spirit to lead. If at first there is a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what he does not have. Does everybody understand that? For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burden, but by an, an equality that now at this time your abundance may supply their lack and their abundance also may supply your lack, that there may be equality. A willing mind, desire, a willingness to examine your thoughts. In Psalm 7, it says, The Lord shall judge the peoples, Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God does what? He tests the hearts and minds. My defense is of God, who saves the upright in the heart. So he will quicken you by conviction or correction, what mind you're allowing to rule you if you are hearing. Amen? Romans 7. But if your heart is too hard, you won't get conviction. You have to wait till you stumble. Again, the soulish mind 
is always looking for comfort from man. Does everybody get this? The soulish mind is always looking comfort for man. The mind of the spirit is always looking comfort from God's presence. There's a difference. It's so different. It's like flipping things upside down, man. Oh, I can't live without them. You can't live with them either. Uh, Romans, <laughs> Romans 7. <laughs> In verse 7, or verse 5. <laughs> From when we were in the flesh, come on, read it with me. The sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. Listen, only one mind produces fruit to life. Has everybody got it? Only one mind does that, and that is the mind of the Spirit. But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not cover. But sin taken opportunity by the commandment produced in me all manner of what? Evil desire. Because it exposed it, didn't it? For apart from the law, sin was dead. I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was to bring life, I found to bring death. See, one of the things is that people don't realize that people talk about the commandments. Oh, well, that's all. The, oh, no. The Ten Commandments of Law are in you now. They're in me and you now. And the word says to fulfill that requirement of fulfilling the law, we must be led by the Spirit. So that we are not judged by those commandments. We're to utilize them to judge us. Does everybody get that? It's different. Because he said, and I will put my law in your hearts and in your mind. And I'll give you a new spirit and a new heart. And I'll give you my spirit. Why will I give you my spirit? He said, so that one will lead you. You will no longer have to be led by the soulish or the flesh mind, but the mind by the spirit. I will guide you. And you will be my sons and daughters. Amen. Why? Because we need to have the mind of the Spirit. He's God. That's what makes us his sons and daughters, isn't it? It's by having the same mind. Is everybody okay? And I'm going to close at Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2. Oh, praise you, Lord. In verse 1, please, let's speak it together. Philippians 2, verse 1. Therefore, is everybody there? Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. The only way we're going to be like-minded is to allow the mind of the Spirit, to have dominion in our life. That's how we're like-minded. Because you'll either be like-minded soulishly, fleshly, or spiritually. By being like-minded, having the same love, being of what? One accord, of one mind. 
Let nothing be done through what? Selfish ambitions or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself, making yourself last. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he what? Humbled himself and became obedient to the point of what? Death. Even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Amen? Praise God. Examine those thoughts. What mind is ruling you? Amen? It's important. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I apply the blood of Jesus on the seed. I ask that you allow it to grow and bear fruit for your glory. And that the mind of Christ, we give rule to the mind of Christ. Take it over. Take us, Holy Spirit. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would fill us, dress us, and possess us. As we offer to you our spirit, soul, and body and flesh to serve you, honor you, express you, and be your witness. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Prepare your hearts for communion and you may bring your tithes and offerings. Up.